Before we can look at why the derivative of sine of x is cos of x, we need to talk about radians and degrees quickly. I've got a table here. What I'm measuring is the ratio sine of theta over theta for different input numbers of theta, looking at degrees and at radians. Now, what we're after is the limit as this theta approaches zero of sine theta over theta, because we're going to need that for our proof of our derivative of sine of x equal to cos of x. So if you're using degrees, you're choosing degrees that get very close to zero from both sides, from the positive side and from the negative side, getting closer and closer to zero. You'll see, you can use your calculator for that, that sine theta divided by theta just hangs around 0.2. But if we use radians and we choose values getting closer and closer to zero from the positive and negative side, Sine of theta over theta is equal to 1. Now, we need this in our derivative. You will see where we use it. So if sine of theta over theta is not equal to 1, then the derivative of sine of x is not cos of x. The derivative of sine of x is only cos of x because of the limit value. So if I'm using degrees, then we can't use the derivatives. So that's why we need radian measure when we start doing calculus with trig functions. And similarly for cos, we need the limit as theta approaches zero of cos theta minus one over theta equal to zero. We're going to see where they are used. So let's jump right in. We want to show that the derivative of sine of x is cos of x. We will use sine of the sum of two angles. Sine of a plus b is sine a cos b. plus sine b cos a. We're going to use that and the two limits. So let's get started. So the derivative of sine of x, we start with the definition of our derivative, which is the limit as h approaches 0 of sine of x plus h. That's why we will need that formula minus sine of x, everything divided by h. So let's take a look. That's the limit as h approaches 0 of sine of x plus h. I'm going to write as sine x cos h plus cos x sine h minus sine x everything over h. All right, now we're just doing some algebraic manipulation. h approaches 0. I'm going to take sine x out of the first and the last term. So I'm going to group the first and the last term together and take sine x out as a common factor. Then I've got cos h minus 1. And then the last one I'm just going to let tag along, cos x times sine h. And it's everything still over h. All right, I'm going to break this up into two fractions now. So that's the limit as h approaches 0 of, I'm going to write it as two fractions over h. So we're going to write this first part. I'm going to keep the sine x in front. It doesn't matter where it x is because I'm multiplying with it. But then I've got cos h minus 1 over h. Plus, I'm going to write cos x in front and I'm going to write sine h over h. So just be sure that you're happy that that's exactly the same thing. If I had to turn that into one term, it'll look like the step before. Now, the beauty of limits is this is the limit as h approaches 0. So the x's are constants. So this is just sine x times the limit as h approaches 0 of cos h minus 1 over h plus cos x times the limit as h approaches 0 of sine h over h. Now we can take it apart because the limit of the sum is the same as the sum of the limits. And here comes these two limit values that we've looked at on the previous page. So this means this is sine of x times naught plus cos of x times 1. So the derivative of sine of x is cos of x. And there we go. Using some of special limits and property, uh, the definition of the derivative. All right, so now let's look at the other one. Derivative of cos of x is minus sine of x. So we're going to use the same two limits on the right-hand side, but just take a look at the cos of a plus b is different. That's cos a cos b, sine a sine b. All right, so let's take a look. So to find the derivative of cos of x, 
it's then the limit as h approaches 0 of cos of x plus h minus cos of x over h. All right. So that is the limit as h approaches 0 of. So now we've got cos of x plus h, which we're using. So it's cos x cos h minus sin x sin h minus cos of x. And now we're going to do the same similar thing as what we did on the previous page. We're just going to group them together strategically. So that's the limit as h approaches 0 of. The first and the last term, I'm going to take cos x out as a common factor. So it's cos x and I'm left with cos h minus 1 over h. Then minus sin x times sin h over h. I did this in one step where I did it in two steps previously. It's a similar technique. It's what we used on the previous page. So that again, we can write as cos x times the limit as h approaches 0 of cos of h minus 1 over h, which I know is going to be 0, minus sin x times the limit as h approaches 0 of sin h over h. And that I can see is equal to 1. So I'm going to have cos x times 0 minus sin x times 1, so that's just minus sin x. And there it comes. The derivative of sin of x is cos of x, and the derivative of cos of x is sin, minus sin of x. And that's where it comes from, using those special limits and the definition of the derivative.